Hey there, it's Ben Housel here, and here in this tutorial we're going to be having a look at Snap Pop from Stupid Raisins that's available from FX Factory. Now with this plugin you can add these little animated uh, flourishes uh, to your video, um, but you can also get them to motion track as well. So this little bit of motion tracking here really adds that little bit of refinement um, to these flourish animations as they pop off the shoulders and underneath the toes when she's skipping, and then also when we're doing things like moving this pot of tea uh, to pour into the mug, and then the little ways that pop out of the mug that have that nice little bit of follow movement of the video in the background. So we're going to jump in and have a look at a few quick examples here of how we can set this up. So we're going to jump into a new timeline here, which I've just added these two uh, videos onto. And we'll have a look at how the basic animation works, how we can position it. And then we'll have a look at some of the motion tracking that you can do, which is super cool and really adds that little bit of extra finesse uh, to this plugin. So we're going to come into our type and generators up here and we're going to scroll down and you'll find the snap pop actually under the, the type generators in Final Cut Pro 10. So if we kind of have a look at some of these different examples, and as you can see when we're scrolling through here, we just have a ton of different animations for every different circumstance to, to kind of pop onto the timeline. But we're going to go for some of the very basic ones to, to begin with. So these uh, little bursts, which are really nice. And we can control the number of bursts that there are, and also some things like the size of them as well. So we'll just grab and drag one of these down to the timeline and just have a quick look at how this works. So I'm going to zoom in on my timeline here. So Command and Plus, and you can see it's just popping out here, and it's quite big at the moment. Um, so we're going to tighten this up so it kind of fits around one of the fingers. And we can use the on-screen controllers to, to kind of do this, and then we can move it kind of into position. So basically we want to animate this so it feels like when she's tapping the keyboard, these little bursts are popping out um, as they're happening. So that's the first thing that we can do. And then if we come up to the inspector on the top right, into the type options, and you can see we can change the width. So we'll just move to the middle here so we can see this a bit more clearly. And you can see we can adjust the, the width so we can make those circles a bit bigger. We can increase the number of points so we can have more kind of flourishes coming out of there. We can change the color so we can pick a different color that kind of matches what we want to do. Or we can have different colors popping out at different points in time. And then we can also modify things like the opacity and that type of thing, which we'll leave um, as is for the moment. We can also modify the position in here as well, but actually it's quite easy to do that with the on-screen controller. So what we want to look for is like a little tap on the keyboard, which we have over here. So we have a tap here, and we've got our little flourish popping out. And actually, I think I'm just going to highlight this and change the radius in, so it kind of tightens up a bit around that. And then we'll just play that through. So you can see it focuses in nice and tightly on that. So, and we can also modify the radius here with the on-screen controller. So if we hold down the Alt key or Option key and drag this up, we'll change the color of this one so we can just kind of see these as we add them. So we made this a little magenta. So you can see now we've got a second flourish there. But actually what we'll do with this one is we'll pop it over on our keys on the right-hand side here. And so you can see we have those little flourishes on different parts of the keyboard. And then her hand kind of moves across the left here a little bit. We'll add another one on the left. So I'm going to grab this same one. So there. And then we'll grab one and drag it up here. So we can really easily duplicate these on the timeline. And then we can just modify the position of those as we've kind of got them into the right spot. So you can see quite quickly we can build up this nice little animation that's happening and just kind of move through our edits uh, and add them all in there. And then if we just uh, kind of come a little bit later, you can see we grab the mouse there. And so for this one, we'll have a little look at this slicer effect and we'll drag that on. And you can see that this is gonna kind of spin out there. So we'll use that when the mouse is grabbed over here on the right hand side and we'll just stretch this out a little bit. So, and move ahead, highlight it, and then we can move it into position here. Or we can also catch a little bit of that mouse movement. So we'll just move back to when she first grabs the mouse. We'll position that over here. So this is the tracking box that we're using here. And then we're right at the beginning of this clip. 
will track forwards and that's going to follow that motion on the timeline. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. I might just move the position of this down. So you can see when I move the position, it's not moving the tracker. So we'll just position this so it's uh, kind of circling the hand. So you can see we grab that and we just get that nice little bit of movement of the flourish of the burst as it kind of comes out from the hand. And again, we can modify the color of this. We can change the opacity. So we might have a little bit of opacity here. And then we can also close our color window here, obviously duplicate this. We'll come back to the beginning here and just retrack this movement. And you can see we'll get that kind of double flourish popping out there, which is quite nice. And we can change the, the width as well of those kind of spikes, so those flourish spikes that are popping out. And we'll change the color as well. So we get a little bit of variation there. So you can see this is what we get. And that little follow of the mouse just kind of gives it that little bit of uh, nice touch there. So we'll come forward to this pouring of the tea. And we're just going to catch a little bit of this kettle's movement here. So we'll use one of these simple bursts here. And we'll drag it down to the timeline. And we're going to track the movement of the, the spout here. And we'll track forwards. Okay, so just real short there and then we'll just see where that's gonna pop out it's almost perfect i'm just gonna reposition that and i'm gonna increase the number of points and i'm just gonna increase the radius just a touch and we will drop down the width just a little bit so now you can see when that pops out as it's popping out it's just following the movement of that pot of tea which is really nice and then we'll just drag up another one and we'll track this too so we'll move our little tracker across track forwards and actually we'll just stretch this out a little bit track forwards again so 30 frames about a second so this is gonna kind of pop out for a second and then we'll just move the position of this so it matches up right at the beginning there. So that's going to play through and then we'll come ahead in time and just as this starts to pour in and touch that cup we're going to scroll down and we'll use one of these curves. So these curves have some other options here which are really handy. So with the curves when we place this on here we have the same tracking options. So I'm going to track this kind of nice contrasty corner of the mug here We'll track forwards. So you can see here when I play this through, my curve is going off in definitely the wrong direction. So I want to rotate that so I can use the rotate option here. And then I can use the position. It's going to be way up here. So now if I got that right, it's going to follow the mug just a little bit. And there's just a little bit of movement of that mug. There's not a lot. Um, but it just means that we're kind of nicely keeping everything really super slick throughout the whole video here. So we've duplicated our curve on the timeline now and we've tracked that. So now we'll get the curve, but it's kind of coming out of the, the same spot here. So if we have a look there, actually I'm going to stretch this first one out a little bit. So this one, second one, we'll move this across. We'll actually come here. So you can see it's kind of chasing the original one. Um, so I'm going to move this across a little bit to the left. And actually I'm going to move it back. So they're overlapping a bit more. That's better. So now I need to redo my track. So you can see with that shorter distance between them, we're actually getting them kind of flowing out. So it looks like a, a nice little curved flourish popping out there. So we'll do one more. And we'll track forwards again. Just nudge that across. Whoops. 
we'll just come ahead in time a little bit and then we can nudge this one across so we've got a third one there maybe we'll nudge these two back a little bit we're not changing the tracking here so we don't need to worry too much about the tracking here we can just move the position and we'll color these all a little bit differently so i'm going to go for a warm orange for the first one we'll go for a kind of warm orangey red for the second one and then for the third one we'll choose this kind of rich red so now you can see we get those nice three different colors popping out of the mug and maybe we'll just drop down the opacity this a little bit more and that will allow us to kind of really see those as they pop out okay so a real nice little bit of animation there um, and then we have if we come up to our sequences here the skipping rope which I looked at in the example so you can see we're just kind of tracking uh, the end of that uh, kind of drop onto the wood and that's just giving it that nice little bit of follow which is making it fit nicely into the video so if we come to our snap pot plug in here we'll scroll down let's choose a different one here and for this one here, we'll choose this liquid five one. So I'm going to drop that down as the timeline. And we're just looking for that moment when the feet are coming down. So somewhere around about here. So we'll just start tracking just before this. And we'll move our position down to the bottom of the feet. Stretch that out. And then we're right at the beginning of our clip here. So we'll track forwards. So now when we come forward, you can see it's just following the drop of those feet onto the, the deck there really nicely. So we'll just do one more. So you can see we go up and then we start to come down and we'll move this ahead a bit. So we'll start tracking from around about here as the feet start to drop again. So now you can see I've got one, two little flourishes, and this one's just a little bit offset there. I just need to get that position a bit better. So we'll just move this to the left a little bit. The track looks like it might be a little bit off. It's kind of drifted off to the right a little bit there. So we'll just come back. I'm going to reposition the track and just let it run again. So you might find your tracking needs a little bit of tweaking as you work through some of these changes, but I found it's been pretty good um, when I've been using this most of the time. And now we've got our little liquid burst kind of off to the left there, so we'll put that back in the right position. So you can see here we've got these liquid bursts when we hit the deck. And we can obviously change, there's two colors in the liquid burst, so we can change one or both of those. So you can see now we've got different colors. And we're just adding that nice little bit of animation. And we can also add um, we've got some other liquid bursts as well. So I've added some streaks up at the shoulders here, but maybe for this one I will add a liquid burst as we kind of reach the, the peak here. So we'll grab liquid four, drop it down to the timeline, and then I'm going to track this top right shoulder. And you can see we've actually lost a little bit of the track there again. So we're going to stretch this out. Maybe a bigger area will work. Okay, so we've got it tracking the whole set of shoulders up there. So you can see here that liquid burst is happening right across her chest, which we don't want. So I'm going to move this out here now. So basically we'll get the bottom and then we need to still kind of move this a little bit so we're looking for the beginning of that liquid burst and actually we'll make this a little bit smaller and then I'm just going to move this out from the shoulder for the beginning there so these nice little bits of animation matching the movement in your video work really well and if we kind of come back to our original version you can see you know on the keyboard it works really well we're kind of just able to position that. We don't need to do any tracking for that. 
with the mouse the tracking works really nicely but then with the pouring of this tea that little tracking and then those uh, three little swirls coming up just add that nice little flourish that little finish uh, to the video to help you bring uh, a different kind of life to your videos so hopefully this has been useful and it's a quick look at the Stupid Raisin Snap Pot plugin, which I really like. If you have any questions about this or any of the other plugins in Final Cut Pro 10, then leave a comment below. I just want to thank FX Factory for sponsoring this video and some of my other videos. And if you'd like to see any reviews of any of the FX Factory plugins, um, or you'd like to test them out yourselves, then either drop me a message or you can go onto the FX Factory store and you can test out any of their plugins uh, for free. That has a watermark, but you can test them out for free before you uh, buy them or feel like you need to use them. Uh, thanks for watching and I will see you on the next video.